everybody at home. It's me, it's Professor Pumpernickel again. It's video number six in the Eureka at Home series and this week's theme is all about magic. Let's talk a little bit about magic, shall we? What do I have here, first of all? Well, it's a an structure that when I first witnessed this thing, my brain was bamboozled. Yes, Professor Pumpernickel's brain was bamboozled when his eyes first looked upon this structure. It's made entirely of just simple wooden sticks and string. Look at that. It's just string, boing, 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 and sticks. Now, when I first saw one of these structures, I had to give it some real brain power and figure out what was going on. Before my brain could work out what was actually going on, I almost perceived it as magic. Now let's have a little closer look at this. It has a name, this type of structure. It's called a tensegrity structure. Tensegrity. Uh, this was a term coined by a very important scientist and his name was Buckminster Fuller. Uh, did a lot of stuff with carbon molecules. You want to have a read up about him. Very important man. Now then, this structure is held together with tension. And the tension is in the center string here. Here it is. The center string is under constant tension. Now, when you first look at the structure, it almost looks like an impossible phenomenon. Just simple strings and simple sticks. Yet it has real solid rigidity. It has stability. And it's all to do with the center string here. Here we go, there's the center string, the center line. And what is happening is this top section, which has a stick running down below the bottom section, uh, is in constant tension. This stick here supports the entire structure on the top. It's purely by being in tension. That means it's pulled taut, okay? And the rest of the strings stop the top piece of the structure from moving around and falling all over the place. These act like guy ropes on a tent. You know, when you erect a tent and you put the strings out, the guy ropes, that gives your tent a lot of strength, okay? And so your, your tent is almost like a tent secretary structure. It's got those lines in tension to keep everything rigid. And that is exactly what's happening here. Isn't it beautiful, yeah? Just sticks and string. Right, now I've got a few tricks I'd like to show you guys, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do the tricks. And you can show your friends too. I have three boxes and they contain matches. Now, this is just what I had lying around the house. I don't expect you guys at home to start playing with matches. It's pretty dangerous. I wouldn't want you to start a fire or get burned. So uh, please, Find something else, if you can, that has a rattle, a small box with a rattle. Right, so I've got three boxes of matches. Two of them are empty. This one is empty. Nothing in there. Okay. This one is full. And this one is also empty. So I've got two empty ones an empty one and a full one. Right. Now, here's the trick. Keep your eyes on the one in the center. That's the one with the matches in it, okay? I'm going to start switching the boxes around and see if you can keep your eye focused upon the box with the matches in. Here we go. That wasn't too hard, was it? Where do you think the matches are? In the middle, you say? Well, let's have a look. Of course they are. I didn't really move them around a heck of a lot. These two at the ends are the empty ones. So let's try it again and keep your eye focused upon the center one and I'll move it around again. Now, 
where is the matchbox with the matches? Could it be this one perhaps? No, it's not that one. Could it be the one in the middle again? <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, it's not that one either. It must be the one on the end here. There it is, all right. So you probably worked that one out, but let's try it again and see if you can keep your eye on the one with the matchboxes, matchbox with the matches in. Here we go. Where are the matches now? Are they on the end here? Let's have a look. Nope, not there. Could they be on this end here? They're not there either. Yes, you've guessed it. They're in the middle again. Hey? Where did the matches go? Hang on a minute, there's no matches in any of these boxes. What's going on here? Could there be something up my sleeve? <laughs> there's the real box of matches. I could have had you going for hours and hours and hours. Yes, that's a fantastic trick to show your friends. Uh, and now that you know how it works, are you going to call it magic? So here's my next trick. Here I have a single match from one of the match boxes. I'm going to make it disappear in thin air. I like a Zam. It completely disappeared. Where has it gone? It's not up my sleeve. I'm going to catch it again from the air. There it goes and wham. I've caught it again. Can I make it disappear a second time? Let's have a look. Alakazam! Where has it gone? Oh, it's just stuck on the back of my thumb there. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's try that again. You just gotta lick your thumb here, just above the nail, below the knuckle, and uh, squeeze it nice and tight, just like this. This should give you enough temporary adhesive that the match will then stick to your thumb like this. And all you have to do then is move your thumb back and it's out of sight. There. It takes a little skill, but that's the skill of a magician, is to keep you from seeing how it all works. And if you snap it back nice and quickly, you've caught it again and it disappears again. You've caught it again, it disappears again. You've caught it again, it disappears again. Oh, it's fallen on the floor now. Here's another brilliant trick you guys can try at home. It's called the magic pencil box. Uh, so I have a seemingly normal box of pencil crayons here, okay? Uh, but when I say the magic words, hum jigalamoli, sagalawunga jumbo, halawaha! Oh my gosh, they've disappeared. You wanna see that again? Here's the magic box of pencil crayons. Cursed with voodoo magic, when I say them words, Hooli booli doogie hula hala magala hoo gaza. They disappear. Well, they don't actually disappear. Um, they're still in there somewhere. There they are. They're just very, very tiny. <laughs> and all I've done is made them so small that they actually disappear when I release the pressure from my finger here. It's my finger just keeping them pressed in. And when I release the pressure from my finger, they drop down. All right, so here's how to make your magical pencil box or crayon box. Personally, I think crayons would work better because they're a little heavier, they're more dense and they would fall down the box a little easier. Uh, and they would be easier to cut the heads off. Okay, the pencils, uh, they work fine actually, but I think crayons may work a little better. So uh, I'll leave the experimenting to you. But yes, I've just cut the heads off and I could run these back through a pencil sharpener and they're 
good to go again as colored pencils for my coloring books. Now, this hot glue gun does get pretty hot. So please have a grown up helping you both cutting the heads off the pencils or the crayons and gluing them together. I don't want you cutting yourself and burning yourself. That would not make Professor Pumpernickel very happy. So I've glued most of them together. I discovered that when the glue was between all of these pencils, they kind of got a little wider because of the glue between each one. And they didn't slide up and down the box very easily. Okay, so when I removed this one, they work beautifully. Another trick you guys can do is the disappearing magic coin. All you need is a simple coin and a plastic cup and watch as the magic unfolds before your eyes. Bum ba ba bum 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 ba. Where is the coin gone? I can make it reappear as well. Chum bidi bi bum 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 ba. Is it something up my sleeve, perhaps, like the matches? Well, let's get the sleeves rolled up, and we'll try it again. Ha! Where's it gone? I can make it appear again as well. Ha! This is amazing. I can do it as many times as I like. Ha! Are you, are you working it out yet? Can you see what's happening? <laughs> well, if you can't, I'm going to show you how it works. All I'm doing is I've laid some pieces of paper down here, and from the very same piece of paper, I've cut a circle and glued it onto the bottom of the cup. <laughs> could it be simpler, could it? But it's very effective. Is it still magic now you know how it happens? Nah. Well, it's not time to finish the video just yet. We have to announce last week's winner to the competition. My question was, what is the word or the name given to the phenomenon of energy being shifted from one place to another, from one state to a different state, eventually being dispersed and dispersed further and further and further, like spread more and more thinly like butter on a piece of toast, I guess. And um, that word is entropy. And thank you to Finn and Ivy in Northamptonshire. You guys guessed correctly, it is entropy, and you win yourselves a goodie bag each with a family pass to Eureka when we open up again. So please come on down and see all your favorites, Professor Pumpernickel, Ian the Storyteller, and Gacko. Uh, we can all have a big party then. So it's now time for this week's competition. Who was the scientist? who termed these amazing structures as tensegrity structures. Uh, these tensegrity structures can be found all over nature. In fact, your own spinal column is a tensegrity structure. Spider silk on the molecular level is a tensegrity structure uh, that can be found all over the place in the natural world. So remember guys, magic is only magic when you don't understand what is happening. Once you understand what is happening, that is knowledge and science. And to Professor Pumpernickel, that's far more magical than magic. So, it's goodbye from me this week. Oh, still got the, uh, sorry about that, still got the matches there. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Goodbye for now. <laughs>